when we ha take a derivative of a function called f of x, that function may actually have different components that are dependent on x. For example, it could have k as a function of g of x plus a v function of h of x. Looking at this function f of x, we have two different dependencies of our function of x. So we have g of x and h of x. k and v are both just constants. So when we want to take the derivative of f of x, so f prime of x, we would need to take the derivative of this entire function. Linearity of differentiation shows us that we can take the derivative of each of the components that rely on x and solve them independently to give us this. So let's solve it from first principles. Looking at this function, we have f of x is equal to x squared minus x. So from first principles, we have f prime of x is equal to the limit as h tends towards zero of f of x plus h minus f of x all over h. Plugging it into our function, so we get the limit as h tends towards zero. So our f of x in this case is x squared minus x. So we go x plus h squared minus x plus h. Then we have minus, let's put this all in a bracket, of x squared minus x all over h. So let's just expand this out. So we get the limit as h tends towards zero. So x plus h all squared becomes x squared plus 2xh plus h squared. The negative x comes through and the negative times a positive h becomes a minus h. Negative x squared, negative times a negative is a positive, and all of that is over h. Now we have a positive x squared and a negative x squared, so we'll get rid of those. We have a negative x and a positive x, so we'll get rid of those. We also have an h in all of these ones, so we have an h down the bottom. We have 2xh, h squared, and a minus h. So if we get rid of this h, we can get rid of that one, change that to a 1, and change that to a 1. Rewriting this gives us the limit as h tends towards 0 of 2x plus h minus 1. So when we're looking at when h goes towards zero, this part here will go to zero. So this will just give us that 2x minus one is the derivative of our original function, x squared minus x. Now let's look at this by just breaking it up so that we're going to look at the first function and then the second function. So this is by applying linearity. We're gonna look at the derivative of this one and the derivative of this part combine them and to solve it. To make this one easier, we're just going to look at the polynomial rule. So f of x is equal to kx to the n, and the derivative of it is equal to kn x to the n minus 1. So looking at the two parts, so we have x squared and minus x, we'll call g of x equal to x squared and h of x equal to minus x to find the derivatives so g prime of x is equal to well in this situation the 2 would come down to the front times by the k which is a 1 so we would end up with 2 then we have x and 2 minus 1 is 1, which we just leave that as being blank. And then we have h prime of x is equal to, well, we have a 1 that's hidden up as a power. 
and we just bring that down to the front. So that would be minus one times one, which is minus one, x to the one minus one minus one is zero. So you get x to the zero, which is equal to one. So that's one times one. So you, you get an answer of minus one. Combining these two values together to give us s prime of x is equal to two x minus one, which agrees with our value from the previous slide of 2x minus 1 when we solved it from first principles. This means that you can solve even more complex problems than this just by breaking them up into their components.